Another major group of macromolecules are the proteins. Proteins are large organic molecules that make up about 12 to 18 percent of an adult's body mass. Like the carbohydrates and lipids, they're also composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. But in addition, proteins contain nitrogen and sometimes sulfur atoms. Proteins have complex shapes and are vitally important in the body's structure and function. There are six major types of proteins that are classified by their functions. Catalytic, contractile, immunological, regulatory, structural, and transport. Catalytic proteins include the enzymes that help regulate the body's chemical reactions and metabolism. Enzymes react with one or more specific reactants called substrates in enzymatic reactions, converting them into one or more products. Examples include digestive enzymes such as lactase. Lactase breaks down its substrate, the disaccharide sugar lactose, into its two monosaccharide products, glucose and galactose. Other enzymes include peptidase, which breaks down proteins, and lipase, which breaks down lipids. We'll learn more about the enzymes in an upcoming video. Contractile proteins are found in muscle cells and are used in muscle contraction, which allows movements of the body and organs. Examples of these proteins include actin and myosin, found in the different types of muscle tissue. Immunological proteins help protect the body against foreign chemicals and microbes. Examples of these defensive proteins are the immunoglobulins, commonly called antibodies, made by a type of white blood cell called the B lymphocytes, or B cells for short. Regulatory proteins include hormones, chemical messengers that help control physiological activities such as growth and development, as well as homeostasis. We previously learned that many hormones are steroids, a type of lipid, but some hormones are also proteins. For example, insulin is a protein hormone consisting of two amino acid chains held together by disulfide bridges. It plays an important role in the regulation of blood glucose level. Neurotransmitters are another type of regulatory protein that helps carry out the responses of the nervous system. Acetylcholine is a type of neurotransmitter that plays a role in muscle activation at the neuromuscular junctions. Acetylcholine bonds to specific receptors on the surface of the muscle fiber membrane, triggering an inflow of sodium ions into the muscle fiber, generating the muscle action potential. Structural proteins are tough cable-like proteins that maintain the organization and support of body tissues and organs. Examples include collagen, which strengthens the skin, bone, and tendons, and keratin, another tough protein forming much of the structure of the epidermis, hair, and nails. Transport proteins assist in moving important chemical substances through the body. Hemoglobin is a transport protein found in red blood cell membranes that carries oxygen through the bloodstream, delivering it to tissue cells. Proteins are long-chained polymers assembled from a group of chemical building blocks, or monomers, called amino acids. There are 20 different amino acids found in nature, and all of them consist of a hydrogen atom and three functional groups attached to a central carbon atom. These three groups include a basic amino group, an acidic carboxyl group, and one of 20 different variable side chain groups, called the R group. 
the side chains give amino acids their unique chemical personalities. Side chains can be simple or complex. For example, the amino acid glycine simply has a single hydrogen atom as its R group. While tyrosine contains a six carbon double bonded ring. Proteins are created in cells during protein synthesis when amino acids are joined together one after another, forming a long chain. Each amino acid is connected to the other through a type of covalent bond called a peptide bond. A peptide bond forms between the carbon atom of the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the nitrogen atom of the amino group of another amino acid. When the two amino acids are bonded together, a small protein called a dipeptide is formed. This is a type of dehydration synthesis reaction since one water molecule is removed with the formation of each peptide bond. One amino acid loses a hydroxyl group while the other amino acid loses a hydrogen atom, which combine to form a water molecule. Peptide bonds can also be broken in a hydrolysis reaction through the addition of a water molecule. This is simply the reverse of the dehydration synthesis reaction. Proteins vary in the number or sequence of amino acids, which leads to an incredible diversity of proteins that can be synthesized. Think of each of the 20 amino acids as if it's a letter of the alphabet. Our cells can combine the different letters, the amino acids, together in different numbers and sequences to produce unlimited combination of words, or proteins. When four to nine amino acids are bonded together, a short chain-like peptide is formed. When ten to thousands of amino acids are linked together, a polypeptide is formed. Two or more polypeptides can also join together to form even larger proteins, like this protein composed of four polypeptides.